We're throwing mine on my line. All right, all right, all right. Good morning, another day, another deal, another time to estimate repairs on a house. So hello everybody, I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. And wow, it's like the whole team has showed up here this morning to take a look at this house. We are here at 411 Chatham Street and I've already bought this house. So it's like, we're coming at this backwards. <laughs> if you know what I mean, we bought this house. Now I know what the after repaired value is supposed to be on this house. In fact, you're not gonna buy a house until you know, A, what the after repaired value is if you're gonna rehab it, and obviously you gotta know what the estimation repairs are. Well, yes, I know what the estimation of repairs are because I sat here, and in fact, I actually came here to this house and walked through the house before we made the offer. But here's the deal. Why are we here at this house this morning? So I know what my estimation of repairs were when I made this offer. Estimation of repairs were $46,000. But now I've got a project manager that now has given a budget sheet of $70,000, maybe a little more than $70,000. And guess what? $70,000 is not going to work on this property. So we got to figure out, we got to figure that out. How are we going to get from $70,000 in repairs or maybe more back down to the 45, 46,000 um, range? Now, what makes the decision on a deal? What makes the decision on a deal is the math, right? It's the math that makes the decision. So as we start out here at this house, two reasons to watch this film to the end. You're gonna learn more about estimating repairs and you're gonna learn how to get your contractor in budget, right? And how to hold the contractor accountable and get finished on time. So I'm gonna grab out of my car my pad and my figures and my numbers as to where we are and where we gotta to get to, all right? I'll be right back. So Doug is here to film for two reasons, teaching my followers how to estimate repairs and secondly, how to get something in budget that's difficult to get in budget, right? So this is a training session what it is. All right. Well, it's, it's more than one thing. It's training, but it's also do, it's <laughs> doing with training. <laughs> right? So, uh, guys and gals, Darren Carpenter, my best friend all the way back to high school, now turned project manager. Chris Burnett, uh, been my crew leader, a project manager, I don't know, more than 12 or 14 years ago. And you just heard about Brandon, general contractor. Technical advisor. Technical consultant. <laughs> In fact, all three of these guys have got on their consultant hat today. And um, I'm going to see how far my checkbook goes. Okay. So, this house here, let's walk to the front for a second. Well, so, this house built in 1945. So, you know, when you do an older house, the first thing to determine is, do you want to keep the integrity and character of what it was like in 1945, or do you just want to go, you know, just make it all look current and contemporary, or do you just want everything new and still maintain that old look? I think we're doing sort of like a combination of that idea. Uh, how many heated square feet? I can't remember. 20, 50, 2056. All right, so we got 2,050 heated square feet. Now the reason you want to know that out the boat or out the gate is because that's going to be one of our multipliers on estimating um, the cost of floor covering, interior paint, exterior paint. For example, when you're estimating interior paint, you're not using wall square footage, right? You're using the heated square feet as your multiplier of that heated square feet. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about in a moment.
So while we're out here, well, first let me tell you where we're going. So my first estimation of repairs was in the mid 40s, as in 46,000 to be exact. What we're starting out with today is around 70,000. So the goal for the math to work is to get from 70 to the mid 40s is the goal. We'll see what we can do. So first of all on the exterior, you know the question is, is are you just going to pressure wash it? Are you going to paint it? Now this is, so Darren this is aluminum sided, right? Yep. So it's aluminum sided. Aluminum siding you can paint. So we got three options or a combination of. We can just clean it. See how that goes. Not by preference. Uh, we can pressure wash it and paint it. Or we can vinyl side it. Right? So we're going to be comparing the cost of vinyl siding uh, this house versus uh, painting it. Um, so the roof. So what was y'all's opinion on the roof? Uh, just like clean it? We're not budgeting for a new roof. All right, so we're not budget so we're not budgeting for a new roof and I didn't either when we started out. Landscaping. So as a budget line item on this particular house, high end as far as uh, what you do out here the, on the high side you'd be around 1500 bucks. Low side 1200. So you're going to be 1200 1500 dollars uh, on your landscaping. While we're looking at the front of the house, guys, was there anything else? Well, windows, and we'll look at windows on the inside as well. So these are like old windows. And most of the time, I get rid of old, old windows. However, uh, was it right in looking at the windows? We can keep the windows, but we were looking at doing what to the windows? Storm, uh, just storm windows on the exterior. So storm windows on the exterior. Check, now, checking the rock around them. And double checking the rod around. So we're going to keep that. We're going to keep the original, or I say original. I don't know if they're original or not. 1945 is a long time ago. They could be. But anyway, we're looking to keep the windows except for adding storm windows. Also remember or know and make note that if you have or when you have a window that's got a glass pane that is fogged, you don't have to replace the whole window with replacement windows. You can just replace the glass, right? And so, obviously, replacing glass in a window, a lot less expensive. When you're replacing windows, if you're replacing windows with um, replacement windows, you're looking at about $300 per window if you're doing replacements, but we're not doing that on this property. That's bad when your stucco comes apart. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's and, what you call come apart stucco. And, and right over here as well. You can sugarcoat stucco foundation. 700 bucks is what they're saying. So that's like painting foundation? That's, that's knocking the old off and then uh, painting it. Well so this that's, is... And resurfacing it. That's resurfacing it and then the painting is covered in the painting. Yes. And the painting side. So as we look at the budget sheet, what we're going to look at here in a few minutes, uh, the way we're going to, the way I'm going to think about it, is what's got to be done, right? We're, that's that's the process as to how we're going to go through this. What's got to be done? Like hands down, you know, there's no question about it. You got to do it, right? Like if you don't have floor covering, you got to do floor covering, right? So this item is you got to. There's no question about that. I mean, that's a got to, right? So that item on the budget sheet gets a check. Now another thing that the guys told me about, in fact Darren told me about it, was this um, attached wood building that's covering up something. Was, this house had a Florida heat pump, which is a water source heat pump. Right. And when you and I last talked, we budgeted for that. I mean, just a regular new HVAC. Based, based on your norms, we put in a line on my. Forty-five hundred. That those were your norms, yeah. And then I had a guy come out and put actual eyes on it and went through the house so he could go and match the returns and the ducting and everything. And we got a line item for that. Okay. So the plan at this point is scrap whatever a swamp cooler system is. 
So we got to do some repair on this. Regard well, the water heater's staying there anyway. So we got to repair the building. So what's our estimate on this? By the way, folks, there's two kind of, of uh, repairs. There's majors and there's uh, miscellaneous. This would be in miscellaneous, but the way we're looking at the budget right now is we're looking at everything, all right? We're not just looking at majors. We're looking at major components and miscellaneous. Landscaping's miscellaneous. Knobs and hinges are miscellaneous. Light fixtures are miscellaneous, okay? But we're, since we're looking at the total budget, we're gonna be looking at, at all those line items. So what have we got on this for a line item? So cost? Darren has $600 and I have a thousand. We're $400 apart. On the building? On the building. That's not a thousand dollars. That's well, more my, like... my estimate was for basically tearing everything off of it and starting from scratch. Because, I mean, I, I just kind of figured all this was wasted. It is. So I was starting, starting from scratch, roof everything. I don't know what Darren was, was thinking yeah, about, I was but... Thinking the same. So, you know, one, one sub says, or one contractor says six, one sub says a thousand. So, 750, right? Okay, let's look back here. So, uh, back of the house, we got decking. We got decking here on the back. We got decking on the side. That's a good bit of decking. So, when we first came out here, we're looking at painting the deck floor. And I don't know how much rock is involved in this deck. So, what's y'all's thoughts on that? Well, that, that's a number that Darren and I were off on. Um, Darren has it for what's your number on 750, that? 750, is that right? 750, and I have it for 1500 dollars. Right. So that that's one of the one of the few numbers on our budgets that we're a part of. Yeah. So there's really two things we're looking at. We're looking at painting the deck floor um, a gray, and we're looking at painting the rails, the handrails, uh, white. So. Um, I think we need to go. I mean, I'd, I'd love to be pleasantly surprised with an actual at 750, <clears throat> but for the sake of budget, I think we need to go with 1500 and give me the opportunity to be pleasantly surprised. So, so how do I work with Darren, project manager? Let me tell you how I work. So we're gonna get our budget sheet together we're going to agree on what the budget is, but here's the here's the deal. I'm not getting a quote and a, I'm not getting a bid as like from a general contractor. Here's why. I'm, get, I'm getting best estimate, all right? So if you're going to do the best estimate relationship, you got to have trust involved, right? So on the best estimate agreement, what that says is, okay, here's what we're going to be budgeting for each line item. Right, Darren is going to keep up with what's the actual, right? So we got budget, we got actual. So as the bills are coming in, Darren keeps up with what the actual. I'm telling you, some will come over, some will come under, right? No matter how experienced you are or your contractor is, you're never going to get it right perfectly, but you estimate the best you can. Now, the reason I like this way to do business is because it protects me and it protects my project manager or my general contractor. You know, it's like working on a used car. Does, I mean, does Murphy live in every house? Of course Murphy lives in every house. Sometimes Murphy's grandparents and children and cousins show up, unexpected, right? They always do. It's just a matter of how many family members show up and screw you. So we're gonna go with the estimate. You got the actual. So Darren will keep up with the actual. On those items that come in over, He'll say, hey, we came in over on this. On these items that came in under, he'll come up with, uh, or he will report to me what comes in under, and then we'll do two or three draws per project. All right, so that's how we're working together.